You okay? I needed someone else to see it. See what? If you leave him alone, they don't give you a sign. This is like some kind of magic trick, right? It's not a trick. Tell me about the real Brahms. He was downright strange. A little girl from town used to come out here to play with Brahms. They found her body in the woods. By the time the police arrived, the place was up in flames. Brahms didn't make it out. Hello? No one's been out there for years. You wouldn't hurt me, would you, Brahms? It's not safe in this house. You don't understand what's happening. He's alive. Good to him, won't you? Of uh, Maggie from The Walking Dead, otherwise known as Lauren Cohen. She's also a model, so she's really cute. She happened to not be at the movies uh, where I was at in the marquee off of 610 and I-10 in Houston, but it was actually a pretty good. Uh, it was actually a really good movie. I had some time to think about this. Um, the synopsis for the movie, like I said, you know, it's about, um, it's about a boy who basically was killed 20 years before. He was placed into this doll, maybe spiritual-wise, and the parents have been hiring all these nannies to, you know, to come take care of the kid while they're out on vacation. And, um, these are some highly notable rich people as well, because obviously they, they own, like, a big mansion, like a castle, like you guys seen in the trailer, so anyways, um, Lauren Cohen, also known as Greta in the movie, she, uh, she comes to the house, and she, she's probably the youngest girl they've ever hired, because they kind of they kind of made mention of that, and they said, look, you know, we're trying to find somebody that, you know, my son won't reject, and stuff like that, so, this movie, the build-up for this movie was probably one of the best builds-up, builds-up, blah, 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 build-up I've ever seen in, in a long time, I'm talking about this beats uh, probably Dirty Grandpa in terms of the build-up, and it beats a lot of these other movies that I've seen in the past. Um, so I just want to make it clear that you guys need to go to the movies. If you have not seen this movie, I recommend you go see it and form your own opinion. Um, I have some mixed reviews about this movie. I say overall I'll give the movie about an 8, and I'm going to explain why that it's not a 9 or a 10. So the movie kicks off Lauren Cohen, otherwise known as... Uh, Greta, she goes to the house, and like in the previews, pretty much, you see, you know, um, she's leaving the U.S., and she's from Montana, I believe, and she's leaving, and she needs the money real bad, and uh, she just had a miscarriage uh, by her previous ex-boyfriend that, I think, beat her or something like that, you learn later on in the movie, um, and basically, the parents are like, look, you got to follow this list of rules here, my son wants to be bathed, he, he needs to be changed, he needs to. Yeah, you have to play the piano for him, sing him songs, read him bedtime story. He always likes to be kissed on the cheek goodnight. Except it wasn't a human; it was an actual doll. So you're thinking like, if in real life you put yourself in this situation, you're like, what the hell are you having me look after a doll? The first thing you think is like, hell no, I'm not going to do all these rules. So Lauren doesn't follow any of the rules. She starts tossing the paper away and everything, and. All of a sudden, the doll sits up on the bed, but you don't actually see the doll sit up, but it's sitting up, and it has the reminder of the rules. No guest, um, all, uh, no guest, I think, is like number seven in the rule book, um, and, and all the other rules that I explained. It's basically ten simple rules to follow. And anyways, um, she doesn't follow the rules. She's, she even tries going out on a date, and the doll stops her from going out on the date with the grocery guy. I thought that was kind of cool. He kind of like cock locks him in a way. I thought it was kind of funny. Um, he makes it, he locks her in the attic, and then, you know, she, she can't be able to get out, so then she has to sleep there the rest of the night, and then she ends up going down to the attic. And she ends up believing that, you know, wow, this doll is actually alive. Like, this is actually, I'm not going crazy. This is not a pigment of my imagination. Um, also, when she was in the shower, before that, the doll takes the, the dress and takes the, the necklace and everything and hides all of her clothes. 
So obviously, like, if you're the only person living in this house, you'd have to believe. You'd have to believe in your mind, wait a minute, this doll is actually alive. The buildup was so good because you don't visibly see the doll move. However, the doll's always constantly sitting up. He's constantly turning his head like when you leave the doll alone, he's always he's always in another position some other way. Maybe his arm was down, his arm will be up here. His face was down here, maybe it's up straight. He's sitting up straight on the bed. So like the jump scenes in this movie will have you scared to death. I mean, I literally like cringed on the seat like this the entire time. This movie was a premiere, so I got I was blessed enough to see it for free. As you can see here, it is a screening. And I had an admit for four people, so this is my fourth movie that I've seen on my premiere. And I'm very blessed that uh, they, they do have these premieres because, man, you know, it's expensive going to the movies these days. And if I can get the tickets, I'll go. This is the fourth premiere movie I've seen. I've seen Shades of Blue. I've seen uh, Dirty Grandpa. I've seen The Revenant with uh, Leonardo DiCaprio. And now I've seen this one. And let me tell you something. The boy is very... It's, 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 the jump scenes is really what's the scariest part. The buildup... It's one of the best builds I've seen in a long time in any of these movies I've seen. All right. Now, the doll, everybody's anticipating in this movie theater, when are we actually going to see the doll move? Visibly see the doll move without it having to be, you know, one minute the doll sitting here and then it kind of takes away from it and then the next minute you see the doll in another position. Everybody is waiting for this build up to see this doll visibly actually move. And that was so cool about the build-up in the whole movie because it makes you think that the doll is going to move eventually. So the build-up to this movie, 10 out of 10. Hands down, 10 out of 10. So comes to find out, the ex-boyfriend finds out where Lauren is at. And he ends up, he ends up in the house playing shoot and pull. And she comes in with a doll and he's just sitting there and he looks at her and he's this really big like biker dude with like a scruffy like beard I mean this guy is is the real deal like he I mean you could tell he's an abusive guy you could tell by his demeanor his vibe and everything he's an abusive guy um, obviously she was running away from him to get away and start all over but he said no you're not leaving he's like we got a plane flight to catch tomorrow and we're leaving tomorrow and he grabs her by the arm so you could tell that he was very abusive and so she lays in the bed with the doll and she said look I, I need you to help me so the doll obviously gets up, or apparently gets up, and puts Get Out on top of the mirror in blood. So he says, who, who the hell did this? You know, he wakes up, he says, who the fuck is doing this? So he, he thinks it's Lauren Cohan, a.k.a. Greta, that's doing it the whole time. And he's about to go off on her. He said, you think this is going to scare me away? So the grocery guy comes in, says, what are you doing here? He said, oh, I heard screaming, this, this, and that. He said, I wouldn't doubt it if that was you. So him and this guy are getting in a tussle. All of a sudden, the doll appears up out of nowhere. So he grabs the doll, and he smashes its head. Completely breaks. At this point, Greta's holding her head like this, like she's about to start crying. You got the other guy, the grocery guy, he's like, oh my God, because he's seen the doll move, so he believes the doll could actually move. Come to find out, the doll actually has a name. His name's Brum, by the way. I never mentioned that. His name is Brum. Okay, so Brum's head is completely broken at this point in the pieces, right? All of a sudden you hear all this noise going around the house as somebody's walking around the house and through the walls. Okay, come to find out that if you've seen in the preview where the guy said, I think I can hear some shh, and he puts his ear up and all of a sudden the window busts and he flies in the air, that's where you actually see the twist of the movie. The whole time it was not the doll. Brom was still alive this whole time. He did not die 20 years before, like I said at the beginning of this video. He was still alive. Brom has a scary looking mask on. The same mask that's on the doll. Actually, the doll's face looks like him. Which he actually created the doll, by the way. You'll find that out later on at the end of the movie. And he puts the ma He has a mask on and he comes out and he has a knife or whatever. The thing that really disappointed me was I, I really felt like this movie should have stuck with the plan to have the doll as the killer and not actually be like Brom that's still alive. Brom's spirit should have been in the doll. I felt like the doll 
really had more emphasis in the movie than the actual killer itself. So that's where I was a little disappointed in the movie. But I felt like the build-up was good. It was so it still made the movie watchable at this point. Um, also, the um, the scene where he's um, kind of stretched with the grocery guy, he's on the ground because they get in a scuffle after he kills the ex the ex boyfriend with the with the broken piece of the head that he busted of Brom the doll and just stabs him right in the neck. So the ex boyfriend or the abusive boyfriend's dead. I think everybody was happy about that. And then so she takes off. Uh, Greta takes off running. The grocery boy is running through the house. And there, um, it turns out that there's actually, like, inside the walls, there's actually, like, walkways that this guy could actually walk and get through the house like it's nothing. Because he knows this house better than they do. So they're running through the hallways, and he can actually walk through the freaking walls, which is pretty cool. Um, obviously, he set that up over the years. The parents helped him or whatever. They said he was an odd kid. That's what the father claimed. He was an odd child. Um, I also forgot to mention that the parents killed themselves. I remember a scene where they're about to walk out of the house right as she had the doll on her side and she said, I'm very sorry. And they walk off. So the parents kill themselves. I, I take it that that was, the, that was probably the most confusing parts about the whole video. Um, I know I'm kind of steering away here because I'm just remembering parts as it is the next day. So bear with me. The parents end up killing themselves. And uh, they, they, they're ended up, they ended up dying in the water. They put rocks in their in their jackets to kind of keep their bodies below i guess that makes sense i think they killed themselves because they couldn't bear through the fact that their son was a killer and he was odd and it just drove them crazy and i think the only way they could deal with it was death i think that that was the reason why they killed themselves but anyways um i felt like this movie was a good movie and uh, I felt like it's it's something to go... You guys definitely want to go form your opinion, go watch the movie. I suggest you do so. Um, anyways, I felt like Brom's character was a little weak. As he's scuffling, running through the house. When you're actually grappling him, you can hit him and throw him around. I really felt like he wasn't like this barbaric type of guy. But he was still creepy at the same time, so it made him a little scary. But anyways, it gets to a point to where he ends up... They end up, Greta and them end up finding like a passageway in his room or in the attic somewhere. It was like through like a little fireplace or I think it was downstairs in the fireplace. They end up going through it and Brom chases them through there. And next thing you know, uh, Brom's getting into it with the grocery guy, knocks him out. Greta ends up running away and she has a chance to escape. But like most girls in most horror movies, she ends up running back to the house. I guess she felt like if I don't kill this fool now, he's just going to do this to the next person. So she runs back to the house. She gets a knife out, puts the, well, it's not a knife, a screwdriver. She puts a screwdriver behind her backside, and she tells Brom, I told you I was never going to leave you, did I? And she said, Brom, it's time to go to bed. She said, it's time to go to bed. So Brom's all following her, and this guy's like in his mid-20s at least. I mean, this guy's not all there in the head. I mean, he's a deformed face. Apparently, his face got screwed up in a fire, and like he was accused of killing some girl. I don't know if him and that girl were in a fire and maybe he survived. That's a part of, the, of the, the story. I don't know what happened with that little girl that was next to him in the picture. So that part's a little confusing. And if you watch the movie, you'll probably be a little confused of that as well. I don't know if he killed her or if she killed, she died during a fire. Maybe try to save her and then he got disfigured. Or maybe he was just in the fire with her and then he got saved but his face was disfigured. I don't know. I, I just don't know. Um, anyways, I had to make sure... Um, so Greta, and, uh, Greta gets in the go, get into the covers because that was one of the rules. She said, remember the rules. It's time to go to bed. She said, you ready to go to bed? He goes, yes. But he doesn't say yes. He just goes. So he goes in the covers. She puts him onto the covers. And then she tells him, and Greta tells him, Lauren Cohen, otherwise Maggie, you know, from The Walking Dead, for you guys who don't know. She ends up telling him, um, sorry, you don't get a kiss because it's part of your punishment. So he grabs her hand because she's to walk away. So she goes up to him, and he's trying to kiss her, but the weird part about it is he had the mask on. So his lips aren't exposed. Like, the mask is covering his face. So how is he going to kiss her? You know, like, that's the part I was confused about. So she's kissing, like, the mask of his lips, and then she pulls that screwdriver out and jabs him, I think, right here in the center. So he throws her up on the wall. That's, like, the toughest part of Brom I've probably seen in the entire movie. He throws her up on the wall. Like, he just tosses her, and she flies. Her back hits the wall. And he's choking her. He has her in a chokehold. And he's choking her, choking her, choking her. And all of a sudden, like, she was about to die. But she just managed at the last second to grab that 
thing that was in him and jabbing him further, so it, it caused him to lose the grip. And then she started pulling it like this a, a little bit. So he released it, and he fell to his death. She ends up getting up. She saves the grocery guy because her and him are involved. Actually, they're messing around. Or they were trying to mess around, but Brom cock blocked, and he turned the music up real loud. Which I thought that was kind of cute. I thought that was actually kind of funny. And uh, they end up running off together, happily married after all, whatever. So she drives off with uh, the grocery guy. They're driving off together. And then all of a sudden you think, okay, well, Brom died, right? Because he got stabbed in the chest. I thought he got stabbed in the chest from the view I saw it in. And uh, anyways, the doll that was busted was put back together, minus a few pieces that were missing, like chips here or there on the face. But apparently Brom was still alive because he put the doll back together, at least the facial construction. So it made you believe that there is a part two coming because I felt like this movie was incomplete in terms of had the little girl die. Um, m more depth into his psychotic behavior, why he is the way he is, why the parents felt the need to kill themselves. They wrote a letter, but it was just shown so fast on camera, you couldn't see the whole thing. And then um, also uh, the situation where he got disfigured, more into that. Um, also, um, you want to get into what happened to the previous nannies. I mean, obviously, you know, he rejected them. He had them killed. Um, I just feel like this movie had a, a lot incomplete about it. There's still some questions that need to be answered. And I feel like now, since at the end he's still alive, there obviously is going to be a part two. I highly doubt Lauren Cohen's going to be in the next one because how is she going to catch up with this guy? So they either go in two directions. One, he's going to follow her back to Montana somehow. Or number two, it, the new nanny comes to the house. That's the only two directions I could see them going in with this. Other, or if the third one, it could be in a totally different other scene in a totally different area with another creepy guy. But I feel like that kind of takes away from this one. So I feel like they need to stick to the plan. I think it would probably be best if he probably followed Greta back to Montana, and I think that that would make it kind of cooler. They can go more into debt with a psychotic behavior in the movie, learn more about the guy and stuff. That would be pretty cool for uh, um, a sequel. But anyways, uh, out of an 8 to 10, because I felt like the doll should have been the killer, it takes away from the movie suspense. Everybody was waiting to see that doll move, and because it wasn't actually the doll, it was him. And it was like, okay, well, why is this... Why is the movie focal point on this doll when it, in fact, wasn't? I think it's like he got... he, he, he I think somehow in this guy's mind, he's watching from the walls because he's alive. And she's t nurturing this doll, so he feels like he's part of the doll. I'm thinking in his psychotic behavior, in his psychotic mind, he thinks the doll's still alive. And she's going to... Uh, if she nurtures the doll, somehow she's going to be attached to him. I'm taking that's the only, like... Thing that I got from that or maybe he was just odd and he just got amused by it maybe he was just toying with her maybe it was just a game to him so see that's some of the the the, the, uh, the questions that are unanswered about this movie but overall I recommend you guys to go see it and go see Lauren Cohan aka Maggie from The Walking Dead as she stars in one of her probably biggest films ever she was a model before this, but you're going to see her filming one of... This is like one of her major films that she's a part of, where she's actually like the main star. So, uh, I recommend you guys to go see it. I gave it 8 out of 10. I was overall entertained with the movie. And I recommend you guys to go see it. So, until next time, I'm actually going to go review another movie today. Some zombie movie. Uh, Prejudice Zombie, something like that. I got premiere tickets to that. I'm going to go see that tonight, and I'll give a review on that later. But anyways... Um, Stephen Rose, signing out, sign on to my channel, um, subscribe, like, comment, whatever.